Hey guys, Dave with First Place Auto Parts. You know, when it comes to your car or truck's brake system, the caliper and the rotors, they get all the glory. They're the things that we see right behind that wheel. The reality is though, guys, is that the brake pad, it's the workhorse of your brake system. And the type of brake pad you choose, whether it's a daily driver or a performance car, can have a lot to do with how your car stops but also how that bite gets applied to the rotor. Today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the three different kind of brake pads, organic, ceramic, and also metallic, understand the pros and cons, and at the end of the video, we're gonna tell you which ones are proper or correct for maybe the type of driving that you do or you wanna do. So guys, stay tuned. In today's video, we're talking about brake pads and which one's right for your car or truck. Hey guys, if you like today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're gonna continually be adding new videos every week. I'm pretty sure you're gonna to wanna to see. The brake system on your car is probably one of the most important safety systems that any vehicle has. Look, it's what allows you to slow down and stop in your daily drives from point A to point B. The reality is not many people understand how a brake system works and really quickly, when you push on that brake pedal, pressurized brake fluid is sent through the brake lines all the way to the caliper at the wheel. Now that pressure applies is applied to the back side of this caliper and it pushes these pistons out that gently pushes this brake pad against the rotor, much like I have shown here. It turns kinetic energy into thermal energy in the form of friction. So as this brake pad is being pushed against this rotor, and there's another gonna be another brake pad on the back side of this rotor, it squeezes this rotor and that's what brings you to a stop. A brake pad has a lot to do with not only the bite or the drag that's created at this rotor, but also it dissipating the heat that's generated from that. We owe thanks to Carl Benz. Look, he had the first commercially viable car, but it was his wife Bertha that came up with the idea to use leather to make the first brake pad. Now leather may have been great back in the day when cars were making two horsepower and wouldn't go over five miles an hour, but it paled in comparison to what we needed later on. So as we began to develop disc brakes, the very first disc brake pads were made out of asbestos. Asbestos, it had a great thermal property to it and it wore pretty well. But the reality is, as we found out later, is that asbestos was very harmful to people's health because it was a carcinogen. If you think about millions of cars on the road, with each one of those cars having brakes at all four wheels, you can imagine the amount of asbestos dust that was being created just as people drove their cars, let alone worked on them. So asbestos brake pads early on when disc brakes were actually coming online were what people were using, manufacturers were using. But what we have today when we talk about organic brake pads are non-asbestos type brake pads. They're very safe for our health and the atmosphere. Now, organic brake pads like the ones I have here come in over 60% of the new cars sold in the United States. They are a mixture of carbon, glass, Kevlar, all baked into a resin that is used to make the brake pad. The nice thing about organic brake pads is they have a low noise and also create a less, less amount of dust. They're not a real dusty brake pad. So there's not a lot of cleanup with them. And the other nice thing about organic brake pads is they are offered at a low price point. They are some of the least expensive brake pads that you can buy for your vehicle. And unlike performance-oriented brake pads, organic brake pads generate a modest amount of drag coefficient, which is what we want. We want that friction to be generated, but they don't generate a lot of heat while doing that. These brake pads, these organic brake pads, also tend to be a little bit easier on the brake rotors. They don't wear the rotor down as much. And that's a good thing because the brake rotors, they're gonna be some of the most expensive or more expensive items that you're gonna to have to replace on your brake system at some point in time. And your organic brake pads, they're very kind and gentle to a brake rotor. Now, organic brake pads, they sound great, and they are for your daily driver, but they do have some drawbacks. And the first drawback is because of their composition, they have a fairly narrow range in which heat range they work in. So these are not the pads that you're gonna wanna use if you like to go up to the mountains and haul the mail through the corners or use your car for a track day. What will happen is the organic brake pads will overheat, and it gives you what we call brake fade. Brake fade is that when you push on the pedal and you literally feel like there's nothing happening. It happens to me at the end of the drag strip once and it's a scary proposition. But organic brake pads are not the pad for you if you drive your vehicle hard or you tow a lot of weight, especially in mountainous areas. The other thing is organic brake pads, they tend to wear faster than the ceramic and the metallic brake pads. So you may replace these with more frequency than you would the other two. And the final drawback to an organic brake pad, if there is one, is that they are more compressible. This brake pad itself, the material, because of the components are made 
made up of will compress more, which means it takes more pedal travel, more effort to push on these things on this rotor to get the same amount of stopping that you would get out of a ceramic or a metallic brake pad. So organic brake pads, look, these are great for daily drivers. They're really kind on the rotor. They create a minimal amount of dust but they do have some drawbacks. And that takes us to our next brake pad, which is the ceramic brake pad. Ceramic brake pads have become very popular since their introduction in the mid 1980s. And the neat thing about these brake pads is literally they have the same type of ceramics that you're gonna find on your kitchen shelf in the form of your plates and your bowls in a bit, a bit more durable of a, a product, a composition. But what these brake pads have besides ceramic in them is also fine copper fibers. And what those copper fibers help do is not only increase the drag or the braking coefficient, the friction coefficient, but it also helps this brake pad dissipate heat better. These brake pads have a lot of benefits. And the first one is, is that the material that's generated from that braking process as this brake pad wears is minimal. And also the color that comes off of these brake pads isn't as dark as the organic material, so it's not as easily seen. So you don't have as much cleanup. The other thing is, is because of that copper that's infused in these brake pads, these things have a wider temperature range, meaning they're a little more able to deal with hot brakes. When you're coming down a hill, so you're dragging your brakes out of the North Georgia mountains and you're dragging your brakes to try to keep your speed down or you're going down a 20 plus percent grade, the ceramic brake pads are better able to dissipate and deal with that heat that's generated. And the third thing is, is they're not as compressible as the organic brake pads. So the pedal feel and effort is less, less pedal effort, but better brake feel with the ceramic brake pads. So the ceramic brake pads definitely has some benefits and the reality is they're very common and popular upgrades to vehicles on the road today. Ceramic brake pads, as good as they are, they do have some drawbacks or some limitations. And the first one is, is that these brake pads tend to be the most expensive brake pad when you're upgrading your vehicle's brakes. Look, it's because of what they put into these brake pads and this material that has a higher cost. So these things are gonna cost you more when it comes time to replacing your brake pads than organic or metallic brake pads would. The second thing is because of the amount of heat that these things generate, again, it's turning kinetic into thermal energy, that heat has to go somewhere. And these brake pads can tend to be able to put up more stress and more strain and more wear on things like your brake rotors, but also when it transmits that heat from the brake pad to the caliper piston to the brake fluid, it can heat that brake fluid up more as well. So these things tend to have more wear and tear on other braking components than what the organic pad would. And the third thing is, these are not the brake pads that you really want to take to track day or use with aggressive driving. While they do have a wider range of their heat range of, than the organic pad, it still isn't wide enough to be used as a performance brake pad. I'm not saying that these things couldn't work in a pinch. They're gonna be just fine getting you down the hill, but it may not be the brake pad that you either wanna take on a track day or put in your truck when you're pulling a heavy load consistently down big hills or you have to stop it with frequency. These things are fantastic brake pads for a lot of the daily driven vehicles or a nice upgrade to organic brake pads. They have a lot of the same benefits in, re in regards to reduce noise, then also the reduced uh, amount of material that's generated that we call brake dust. But these things are perfect for daily drivers that want just a little bit more, but they're not really meant for performance driving or towing applications. You're just not gonna excel there. And the third type of brake pad is called a semi-metallic brake pad. And look, these brake pads are different than fully metallic brake pads, which are really reserved for high performance applications. Semi-metallic brake pads are made up of a 30 to 70% mixture of iron, copper, and also steel and other alloys all baked into a brake pad that has graphite impregnated in it to help increase the drag coefficient or the friction coefficient at the pads or at the rotor. There are a lot of different levels of semi-metallic brake pads and a lot of times you'll see these things listed as either high performance, street or towing applications, all which will use some sort of a semi-metallic brake pad. And for many drivers, the semi-metallic brake pad is the brake pad of choice, even over ceramic. The reality is, is that these brake pads have a very wide range of temperature operation because the metal that's impregnated or is used to make these brake pads or form these brake pads, they have a better ability to dissipate heat. Again, they put a premium on braking components such as your rotors to be able to dissipate that heat. But the reality is these brake pads will not have brake fade nearly as quickly as the organics or even the ceramic brake pads will. For performance applications and towing applications, 
the semi-metallic brake pad is the pad of choice. Also, because of the metal makeup in these brake pads, they are far less compressible than either of the first two types of brake pads. So the pedal feel is fantastic with these things. It, oh, it feels as if you're getting more bite for every application, or every pressure you apply to your brake pedal. My experience, I put a set of these brake pads that were designed for towing on my Ram truck, where I routinely pull either a car trailer with two razors on it or dirt bikes. And the reality is the brake pedal effort is much less with these semi metallics than what came on the truck originally, which were organic brake pads. This thing, my truck stops without even thinking about it. Look, and also when I'm dragging the brakes, when I'm towing my boat down a hill, I have zero brake fade. And I'm also not getting that smell from all the resins we're baking out of the original brake pads. So semi metallic brake pads, if you either use your truck as a truck or you use your car as a high performance vehicle where you like to dive into the turns going in kind of tight and fast and pulling out even faster, some of the metallic brake pads might be the right option for your vehicle. And like all the brake pads, there's some trade-offs that come with each, each one of these types of pads and this semi metallic pad is no different. The first drawback or potential thing that you should know about is that these things can be noisier than the first two types of brake pads. Semi-metallic brake pads, again, because of the metal makeup, depending on it with 30 or 70%, tend to be noisier, you can get some brake squeal from these things, especially when they're hot. The second thing that can be some sort of an inconvenience for some people is that these things tend to be really aggressive on other brake components, including your rotor. It can make you wear this rotor down much quicker than the organic or the ceramic brake pad will. So it tends to be a little harsher on some of the other braking components. You're getting more performance but their other components are paying the price for that. And the third thing is, is that these things tend to generate quite a bit more brake dust than what your organic or ceramic brake pads will. So if you don't like cleaning your wheels or you just don't want to touch those things ever, some metallic brake pad may not be for you. As far as price goes, some metallic tends to fall in the middle of organic and also ceramic, so they tend to be a good value. They've been around for a long time and they're widely available. And like I said earlier, there's different compounds that are made up for different applications that can suit your needs perfectly. So there are some drawbacks to some metallic, but from a performance standpoint, just from my personal application, it was worth it. You got a lot of option when it comes to brake pads and the reality is which one you choose has everything to do with how you use your vehicle. If you do a lot of spirited high performance driving, some of metallic brake pads might be the right choice for you. Maybe you're a soccer mom where you drive primarily in town and you do a lot of commuting day in and day out on the interstates or stop and go traffic. And then ceramic brake pads might be the one for you, especially if you don't like washing your wheels. And then finally, maybe your car sits a lot or you're looking for a low cost option that doesn't generate a lot of noise and has decent brake feel. Then in that case, organic may be the brake pad you might want. Either way, there's a brake pad that is right for your type of driving and your vehicle. And the reality is it can change the way your vehicle feels by upgrading to the next type of brake pad. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video and hopefully it was informative for you. At First Place Auto Parts, we offer a ton of brake and disc brake conversion kits that can increase the performance of your vehicle, whether it be a late model or a classic American muscle car or truck. Guys, until next time, keep the hammer down, keep it between the guardrails.